You're listening to the Make It British podcast. I'm Kate Hills and I'm on a one woman mission to save UK manufacturing. I invite you to join me each week when I'll be sharing the stories behind some of the best British made brands and UK manufacturers and offering you advice and tips on making in the UK. So let's get on with today's show. Welcome to episode number 166 of the Make It British podcast. So on last week's episode, number 164, if you were listening to that and taking notes, it was about what you should look for the first time you go and see a new manufacturer. And I promised you last week that it was part one of a two-part series that I was going to be doing. So today's episode is the part two. And it's all about the questions that you need to ask a new manufacturer. So particularly when you go and visit them on that first ever factory visit. Choosing a manufacturer is one of the most important decisions that you can make in the development of your products. So it really is essential that you find the right one. When you're assessing whether a manufacturer is a good fit for you or not, there are certain questions that I think it's really great to ask them. Some of them you may want to ask over the phone initially in order to narrow down your choice of which manufacturer you're going to go and see. But others, such as those about price, I really recommend that it's much better having those sorts of conversations when you're face to face with the actual person who's going to be making those products for you. So when you're looking for a new manufacturer, it is worth speaking to as many as you possibly can over the phone first and then maybe going to visit one or two so that you can get a feel for the sort of operation that they run and so that you can ask these sorts of questions when you go and see them. So before we get on to the 12 questions that I think you should ask when you first get to know a new manufacturer, I just want to let you know if you are looking to work with UK manufacturers or you want help with building your brand that is made in the UK, or maybe you're relocating your production from overseas and you want to get it made in the UK, then I do have a limited number of people that I work with closely to help them do just that. So if you want me to notify you when I next have some space available, pop onto my website on makeitbritish.co.uk forward slash work with me, get yourself on the waiting list and I will let you know when I next have some space open to work with you to help you build your British made brand. So now on to those 12 essential questions that you need to have, right? Have you got pen and paper ready? Or maybe you're listening to this in the car, in which case maybe go back and make some notes later as well, because you're definitely going to want to have these questions to hand when you next have a conversation with a manufacturer. So number one is, can I see the factory floor? Now, it may sound obvious, but sometimes if you go and visit a manufacturer, they may just think you want to sit in their fancy office and have a chat and a cup of tea, which is lovely, but you do also want to see where the magic happens. It's so important. And it really is a true indication of how a manufacturer runs their business when you see the factory floor and where the products are being made. If a manufacturer won't show you where the product is being made, then that is definitely a red flag. If they tell you that some of the production takes place in a different location, ask if you can see that location as well. Sometimes manufacturers will subcontract part of the work when they're busy or if they don't have the necessary machinery. If that's happening, you want to know that that is the case and you want to be able to make sure that you see the other production location as well. So the first question is, can I see the factory floor? So the second question I recommend you ask when you're talking to a manufacturer is what machinery do you have? Now, different equipment has different capabilities and it's worth finding out what the factory can do with the machinery that they've got. There may be something that they're capable of that you haven't considered, but which could drastically improve the production of your product. It may also give you ideas for future development work when you see what machinery they have and what they're capable of. One of the great benefits of visiting a manufacturer is that you can see a range of their capabilities and their machinery and gain ideas for future product development that you might not have thought of had you not gone to visit. 
Question number three is what quality control do you have in place? Now, I did cover this last week when we talked about what to look for in terms of where is the inspection happening. So while you go around a factory, this is your chance to find out what quality controls they have in place. So at what stages of the production is the quality being checked? Do they have a gold seal sample or a pre-production sample to refer to as they go along? Is there some sort of final inspection process that's taking place before the product is being shipped out? What's the lighting like in that area? Does it look well staffed? Quality inspection is particularly important in factories that are making children's wear or products for babies, where something like a broken needle being left in a garment can be a life-threatening situation. So you definitely want to know what the manufacturer is doing in terms of controlling the quality of the products that they're making. So the fourth question you want to ask is what audits and industry certification have you got? Now, an audit is an assessment that's carried out to ascertain a factory's quality systems and their workplace environment. It does cost a manufacturer money to get an audit done. So some smaller manufacturers may not have had any. That doesn't mean they're a bad factory because they haven't got an audit. Generally, it means they haven't worked with the sorts of big companies and the big corporate companies that require that they have one. So it's worth asking the question and it's worth asking if they haven't got an audit, why they haven't got one. The types of audits can vary from factory to factory and the sorts of products they're making. Some of the more common ones to look out for are things like Smita, Sedex, ISO 9001, ISO 14001, Fast Forward, which is a relatively new one that a lot of the factories in Leicester are being asked to have. Living Wage Foundation is another one that many manufacturers sign up to. So it's worth you doing some research into audits as well before you ask the question so that you know which audits you might want your manufacturer to have had. The next question, which I always think is really telling, is who else do you manufacture for? Now, asking that question gives you a really good idea of the level that the manufacturer is working to and the types of businesses that they're used to dealing with. Finding out who they're making for currently rather than who they might have worked for a long time ago is also really important because staff could have changed, the way they work could have changed, everything could be different if it was someone that they worked with 10, 15 years ago. So can't try and get a list of who their current customers are. You don't want to be placing work with a factory who's making volume products at low quality when you actually want to make really small quantities at really high level quality. So it's a really good benchmark when you know which other brands that they're making for as whether they're going to be right for your business or not. Number six. Now, this is always an interesting one. Can you sign an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement? So an NDA is a legal document between two different parties to say they're not going to share each other's sensitive information in terms of product development, an NDA is most commonly used where the designer has original designs that they don't want anyone else copying. Now, while most factories will sign an NDA if you ask them to, in reality, there are so many other places in which your product ideas could actually be seen or stolen or copied. It's probably much more likely that you're going to be copied when you put product ideas on social than by your actual manufacturer if you're making in the UK. The most important thing, I think, in terms of protecting your designs is to keep detailed and dated records of when you created them so that you can prove that they originated with you. When it does come to giving your designs to a manufacturer, the most important thing is to build trust with that manufacturer. If you visit a factory and they show you the designs of lots of other brands that they work for, then probably take that as a warning sign that they're going to do the same with your products. So I sometimes think by storming in there and asking a manufacturer straight away to sign an NDA, it may not be getting off on the right foot from the very start with them. It maybe doesn't help to develop the level of trust that you need. Have a think about whether your product is totally original and whether it really needs an NDA with that manufacturer. And if it does, then think about how you're going to ask that question with them and how you're going to approach that. Probably it's not the very first thing to speak to them about. So the next question I've got on my list is who will be my main point of contact? So you know the score, you go to a business, they put the best salesperson in charge of the customer onboarding, you're really impressed, you decide to give them your order, and then they put the junior in charge of your account. Everything starts to go a bit skew with. 
If you are impressed by the owner or the person that showed you around, ask if you can have them as your main point of contact going forward. It's a great thing to do if you want to build up the relationship with the person that you first meet. Of course, businesses can change and sometimes you will need to speak to different members of the team. And it also depends on the size of the business as well on how many people they've got. You may not be working directly with the owner or if it's a really small business, you probably most definitely will be. But trying to keep that consistency with the person you're communicating with is really important, particularly when you work with a UK manufacturer. The next question to ask is how many units can your factory produce a week? If you need to order 5,000 pieces of something and the factory can only produce 50 a week, it's going to take them a blooming long time to make your order. So consider whether you can grow into the factory as your orders get bigger or whether you might outgrow them too fast. Also consider if it is a factory that's making tens of thousands of units a week and you've got a very small order that you may not be a priority customer for them and you might be better off starting somewhere smaller first and then building up towards working with a manufacturer that can do larger orders later on when you've built up your brand. Now, the next one is really important, particularly if you're a small business, and that is asking what are your payment terms? Now, all businesses need great cash flow, particularly UK manufacturers. So they're going to be keen for you to pay within a fixed and agreed time frame. Some manufacturers may ask you to pay a deposit or even the full amount up front, especially if they haven't worked with you before. Or they may ask you to pay 50% upfront and the other 50% on delivery. And they're pretty much always going to want you to pay them before they ship the goods. But it is worth asking about what their payment terms are. So you can make sure that you have got the cash flow in order to pay for it at the right time when the production is ready. It's also, I think, worth going to see the final production before it is shipped so that you know what it is that you're paying for and that it is what you expected being able to do that is definitely one of the advantages of working with a UK manufacturer. And it's also a case of a stitch in time saves nine. If you can see the production when they finished it at the factory before they ship it, if there's anything that does need changing, they can do it while it's still in the factory rather than you incurring the shipping cost to send it to you to find out that it's not quite as you expected and then you've got to ship it back again to get any changes made. So I'd highly recommend that you pop along and see your production as they finished it and before they ship it to you, especially if it's the first time that you're working with this new manufacturer. Right, number 10, question number 10 is what is your minimum order quantity? It's always the question that small businesses want to know. And it can vary very much by the type of product that you're going to get made but it is one of the key questions to ask a manufacturer from the start. There isn't any point going to see a supplier who won't set up a production line for less than a 2,000 piece order if you only want 20 pieces. The reason manufacturers have minimum order quantities is to make their production efficient and to avoid things like costly stop starting of machines. It just keeps their production running much more smoothly the bigger an order that they're making. Now, I do find in reality, some manufacturers will bend a little bit on their minimums, but that will definitely command a higher production price to make it worth their while. So it's worth finding out if they have different price breaks according to how many you're going to get made. Often, if you just order just a few more, you can get into the next price bracket and you can lower your cost price. So consider whether you're spreading your order across too many low quantity options and if you could consolidate some of your styles and order more of the key items within the range in order to increase the quantities that you're ordering and meet their minimum order quantities. As your business grows, hopefully so will your order quantities and your price should come down. But it's a great question to ask a manufacturer from the start to get an idea of whether you're going to be able to meet their minimum order quantities from the beginning. A lot of people say to me, I can't find anyone that will make small quantities, particularly if you're a startup and a small business. Now, there are definitely people out there you just haven't been looking in the right place or speaking to the right manufacturers or having the right conversations. So the chances are you've been approaching totally the wrong manufacturers if they're telling you that their minimum order quantities are in the thousands because you've just not found the right sort of manufacturer for you and your business. Okay, so the next question is what are your lead times? Now, your lead time is the time it takes from when you confirm an order and deliver all of your raw materials to the factory 
to when the order is ready to be shipped. It totally varies from product to product. It can be affected by the time of the year, how busy the manufacturer is, what it is that you want to make, but it's important to know this information and to take it into consideration when you're placing your order. It's also worth knowing that just because your 500 pieces will only take the factory a week to manufacture does not mean that they'll be ready within a week of you placing your order because a factory will plan production weeks or even months in advance in order to keep their workforce busy and not have any downtime. So you need to allow for that in your own critical path planning. And if you want to know more about critical paths, go back to episode number 158 when I talked about exactly why you need a critical path and how you can create one. It's also worth mentioning here that it's worth building in a few weeks as contingency to any date that a manufacturer gives you because you never know. I always think it's best to allow for worst case scenario. So don't arrange a photo shoot or a great big launch the day the manufacturer says they're going to finish your products because in reality, you've got to allow time for checking and shipping and potential things that could go wrong. And God forbid, you know, everything that we've seen over the last year with the pandemic, things do go wrong. So always make sure you build yourself a little bit of a buffer into those lead times. And finally, my 12th and final question that I've got here for you to ask a new manufacturer is what is the cost for sampling and prototypes? It always amazes me that it comes as a surprise to many people that they've got to pay a manufacturer to make samples. They kind of think, well, you don't you want the business from me? Why won't you make my samples for free? But in reality, so many UK manufacturers have had their fingers burned where they've made samples for free in the past and then the production has not been made in their factory. It's actually been made in a factory overseas. But now it's pretty much commonplace that all factories will charge you for sampling and prototypes up front rather than spread it over the cost of the production order, which may be the case with factories you might have worked with overseas. Now, how they charge for the sampling and production can totally vary. Some manufacturers will charge an hourly rate for development time. Others will charge a flat fee per piece, usually around three times the production price. But ask the question early on so that you can factor that into your development charges and into your budget. So ask them, what is your cost for sampling and prototypes? Because it can really ramp up your costs if you do a lot of sampling and you're paying for all those samples. So it may make you actually think about what you're actually developing and whether you can cut down all of those designs that you've originally got down on paper. So maybe you don't need to sample that 12 different design of dress that you had in mind. Get the first production done with the new manufacturer, test it out, get some sales behind it, test out how you get on with working with that manufacturer and then go back and order more with them. So those are my 12 questions that you should ask a manufacturer the first time you speak to them. I hope you found them useful. If you didn't listen to last week's episode about what to look for when you go and visit a manufacturer or a factory for the first time, do pop back and listen to episode number 164. As always, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Make It British podcast. I make an episode every Tuesday and Friday, plus there are bonus episodes occasionally. So make sure you subscribe in your favourite podcast app. And if you're looking to find British made brands or UK manufacturers, check out the directory on the Make It British website, which you can find at makeitbritish.co.uk forward slash directory. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.